on the U.S. Uh, pediatric regulations, and I know this slide is quite busy, um, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but wanted to provide a really high-level visual of the initiatives and legislative and regulatory actions that have really occurred over the last um, uh, 45 years, um, and really to, I'm sorry, uh, 45 years to support pediatric drug development in the United States. The first FDA guidance um, on conducting research in pediatrics was actually issued in 1977. But it was not until, until the 1990s and early 2000 that the first regulatory initiatives based mainly on a voluntary process were launched successfully in, um, in, by FDA in the U.S. So as Martin mentioned, we only have a limited amount of time and a lot to cover, so we're really just providing a high-level overview. And it's certainly um, there's a lot of details surrounding the regulations, and we have provided a lot of resources at the end of this presentation for you to kind of do a bit of take-home reading. So there are some key pediatric regulations that I wanted to review in a bit more detail. So the first is the Best Pharmaceuticals for Children Act, or BPCA. In 1997, BPCA was codified um, a voluntary process initially included in the uh, Prescription Drug User Fee Act of 1997, which was subsequently renewed in 2002. And this is where FDA would define the pharmaceutical products for which needs uh, were, were identified for, for pediatric studies. Um, and that was really based on a perceived public health impact. And the, the outline of those necessary studies, and there is actually a priority list that is published um, annually, um, and it's, it's uh, available um, on the FDA website, and I've actually provided a link to this um, again at the end of the presentation. But it really um, helps drive um, the, the identified um, issues for FDA, and really uh, when we think about in terms of pediatric written requests um, that are issued to sponsors by the FDA are really um, based on that list of priorities. So as I mentioned, BPCA is a voluntary program that provides um, a financial incentive to companies in the form of additional marketing exclusivity if the sponsor conducts the studies requested in a written request. What is important to understand is that the indications to be studied in pediatric patients may not necessarily um, be limited to those um, that are authorized or that will be authorized in adults, but may actually include additional indications with the active moiety. So um, if, again, if FDA um, in, uh, determines that there could be an additional health benefit in the pediatric population. This is particularly relevant for rare and pediatric only uh, conditions. And so the sponsor um, under BPC is an, under no obligation to conduct the studies that are specified in a written request. And I'll talk a bit further on the process of the written request and on um, the proposed pediatric study request um, that can be initiated um, by a sponsor and the qualifying um, uh, criteria for exclusivity in just a few minutes. The next very important regulation is the Pediatric Research Equity Act, which this, is a re this requires sponsors uh, to determine the safety and efficacy of new products, both drugs and biologics, uh, in pediatric patients under certain sets of conditions, unless the FDA has granted a waiver. The FDA publishes a, a list of diseases for which they will grant an automatic uh, full waiver. And again, I've provided a link to this list. But what's really important um, to note is that even though FDA has identified um, these conditions on the full waiver list, the sponsor is still required to submit a PSP and actually request the waiver. I was recently involved in a situation where I had a sponsor contact me to panic. They actually had submitted their NDA uh, for an indication that was actually on the list of automatic waivers. And during the review, the agency had requested that they immediately submit um, a PSP. Fortunately, we were able to get the, um, the waiver submitted in just a few days so as not to delay review of their application. So now, um, it, up until 2017, products with orphan drug designation were exempt from the pre-requirements. However, under Title V of the FDA Reauthorization Act, sponsors who are developing new molecular therapies to treat a rare adult cancer are now required to evaluate that new molecular targeted drug or biologic if it is pertinent to uh, a pediatric cancer. And there actually is a published list um, now um, that has uh, uh, over 200 possible targets um, that have been identified by the agency um, that would be appropriate for pediatric development. So again, and there's also a link to that um, uh, particular um, uh, list. <laughs>